Oh, we're ready to go, I guess. Okay, today is February the 2nd, 2021, and I am Dawn Cornell from Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. We are a full-service quilt shop, a yarn shop, a cross-stitch shop. We have wool. We have punch needle. Oh, you name it, we probably have it somewhere around here. If we don't, we can order it. So uh, today we're here to talk about my favorite thing is color. And uh, Moda Fabrics, Moda uh, is a distributor for uh, our fabric that we sell. They're in Dallas, Texas, and they sell a solid collection called Bella, Bella Solids. And uh, they have marketed this program called My Favorite Color is Moda, and we jumped right on the train. And now we're ready to ride. So let's go on a journey together. We are going to start out with the book. This is the book. You can come in, and with a kit, you can purchase this book. And um, inside are the instructions. So we're going to follow those instructions. And today, number first thing we're going to do is we're going to start cutting. But before we do that, let's talk about our equipment a little bit, okay? So I'm going to start out with a ruler. And whenever I cut out a quilt, I never cross uh, ruler companies. I always use the same brand of ruler every single time all the way through. So find a favorite brand that you like, that you can see the lines good, you can see the numbers good, they make sense to you, they have just enough lines to uh, be able to read and uh, make sure that you know where your markings are. I like the Creative Grid rulers. I find them easy to read. I find the lines easy to follow. And you'll notice they have whole increments and half increments. That's because this is a two and a half inch ruler. Has a little extra half an inch. All the rulers that are um, for their standard rulers, not their specialty rulers, but their standard rulers, all are in half um, increments. So this is my eight and a half inch by 24 and a half inch. And this is my go-to ruler whenever I start cutting out a quilt. I would not be able to get along without this ruler. Then this is the two and a half by 12 and a half. And this is going to come in handy and you'll see when and where and why and how. I'm going to keep it over here in my little keeper. This is the bee's knees. It's got these little fingers that hold your rulers, and then I got a glue stick here, and a and an ink pen, a uh, marker, a pencil, and my rotary cutter. So those are going to be the things I'm going to use today. Of course, I'm going to use an iron and an ironing surface, and my ironing surface is a wool mat. Uh, I prefer the wool mat. Some people like it. Some people don't. Speaking of that. I have a little bit of a disclaimer. These videos over the next several sessions, this is episode one, part one, um, but all these videos that we're gonna make, making this quilt, is going to be uh, my way of doing things. My way, however, is not the only way, even though you know, sometimes I present myself as the know-it-all, but I don't know it all. I just know what works for me. And I've been uh, sewing a long time, and I have learned from so many different people that I have just taken bits from this person and bits from this person. And I hope that's what you can do here as we go through this journey together, is you can take some bits from me that maybe you hadn't thought of before and try them out. If they work for you, fantastic. If they don't, then you it hasn't cost you anything to try. So uh, maybe it's a way of thinking about something that you hadn't thought of doing it that way before. I'm right-handed, so I'll be cutting out right-handed. I don't know how any other way to do it. Uh, I'm not ambidextrous. Are you impressed that I even know that word? I am. And uh, plus, I even know how to say it. So, I mean, pronunciate it. That probably wasn't even the right pronunciation, but I did my best. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> I have a little bit of a weird sense of humor. I hope you get used to that. 
because uh, we're going to be together for a while. You can slow these videos down. You can put them on pause because they're going to be lengthy because we are going to actually step by step every stitch, every cut, make this quilt together. So here we go. I'm going to start by ironing and pressing. So over here is my ironing surface. Here's my first color of fabric. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to iron half of it because my mat is only half the size of the ironing surface. I've got water in my iron. My iron is set all the way to the hottest setting. And it's got steam all the way over to full steam. I also have some best press. If you're not familiar with best press, it's a uh, starch and sizing alternative. It is not quite as stiff as starch. Stiff as starch. That's a saying, isn't it? it is yeah, it is now. So anyway. But it helps to get out the wrinkles. So if I need a little extra help that steam doesn't give me, I will use that. So I'm just going to simply take my iron. Now see on these real stubborn spots where the fabric was folded? Came out real nice with the, uh, just with the uh, steam. But you've got to let it sit there for a second. Now, I'm not going to get this perfect. Uh, we're on uh, film. We're trying to film this. So we're just going to iron a little bit. You all know how to press, I'm sure. Oh, I forget that you can just sit that down. This is a new iron to me. It's the O-L-I-S-O. How do you say that, Peter? Alisso iron. It kind of has its own feet. And when you set it down, it stands itself up off the surface, so no scorching. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds dangerous to me. That's pretty scary. That's pretty scary. Okay, now I'm going to turn it around and do the other half. Now, there's a little label. When you buy your kit from Always in Stitches, we label the fabric. We know that this is fabric one. So I'm going to put that right here to remind me that that's fabric one because that's important when I start cutting. I don't want to cut fabric one the way it says to cut fabric two. Well, that would kind of be a disaster. I am doing the cookie tin. Yeah, cookie tin. It's kind of a Christmas collection colorway. But the blocks are the same, but the fabrics, the colors are different. And... The colorway up on the bulletin board is Primrose. Primrose Garden, maybe it's called. Would you like to see all the colorways? Yeah, let's look at all the colorways. Okay. They're right here in the front of the book, I believe. Well, I thought they were. There they are. All the colorways. Primrose Garden. Coastal Cool, Tropical Getaway, Cookie Tin, that's the one I'm doing, Trading Post, and Pink Lemonade. <coughs> Yummy, very pretty, yeah, aren't they nice? So, just a little bit more ironing. Okay, that was a good exercise in ironing. Some people don't even own an iron. Did you know that? I found that out on YouTube the other day. A lady was saying, iron? I don't iron. So anyway, I'm, well, my iron's never seen clothes.
Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is kind of a uh, a must do. Okay, you've got to find the straight of grain of your fabric. Now these raw edges here. See that? Uh -huh. You want to get rid of those. Now, sometimes people rip them off. Sometimes people cut them off. I'm going to leave them on there until I cut my strips, okay? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to line them up and see how that hangs really wonky. Can you see that? I mean, can you really see that it's kind of really wonky wonky? like a bend. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is in my fingers, I'm just going to move them back and forth, back and forth like this. So I'm shifting the back fabric one way and shifting the front fabric the other way until that goes away. Do you see that? Line up those salvage edges. Those are called salvage edges. I need to adjust it just a little bit more. Take your time in doing this. It pays off in the end. Okay, that's the best place right there. Then I'm going to take it back over to the iron. And I'm going to press it again. Now that's going to get me a nice little crease over here, but I'm not going to press that over there hard. This just kind of is sticking the fabric together so that when I cut my strips, they'll stay together. So see how flat that fabric is laying? There's no folds, no ripples. Now, I'm not going over here on this uh, fold because I don't really want it to be a hard fold. Excellent. So now you can see where it was cut from the fabric store that it really wasn't uh, squared up correctly. Of course, when they roll a bolt, you never know what you're going to get. So they don't always roll them straight. I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to fold it in half this way. So now I have four layers of fabric. And it sits on my uh, table real nice. See that? If I had all this hanging over... That would not be good because then the fabric would be working against me. So I'm going to just keep it folded like this. And this is what I'm going to do. My folds are together. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to find this first line. I'm going to put it right up here on the fold. Making sure it's right on the fold. This line right here, right on the fold. Then I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to look to see that it's pretty straight, and it is pretty darn straight, okay? And then I'm going to get my rotary cutter. Now, I'm lucky here because I can walk around my cutting table, and I can straighten the fabric. I've got a brand new blade in my rotary cutter. When you turn on this video, before you start cutting, you should put a brand new blade. Do yourself a big favor and put yourself a new blade in your rotary cutter. If I didn't have the opportunity to do that, I'd have to start with my mat and my cutting on this side. See how I can turn my mat? do my cut, and then flip the mat. 
So that would be another option. Okay. Now I'm going to look at my book, and it's going to tell me the cutting dimensions for fabric number one. I'm going to find the page. Fabric number one, right here it is, so pretty. And what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you guys know, there's a new cross-stitch thingamajig. What to do with it, Peter? Oh, here it is. Yeah, it's called Cross Stitch Line Keeper. Now, these things are self-magnetic. They, they magnetize onto one another. It's just a little strip of thin magnet, and it just flips over, and you can catch a page between that. So it helps you keep your cross stitch all lined up, right? But look what it's going to do for me, Peter. Come here, and, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to just slide this in right under these numbers right here, right there, so I can see what I'm supposed to be cutting. Then I have this little stand that I can prop it up on. Also, they make this little stand in the cross-stitch department. Who knew that cross-stitchers had so much in common with the uh, quilty folk? But anyway, it stands up like that. You can put your little book on that. So. Go into the cross-stitch department here at Always in Stitches, and we'll fix you right up. So I've got my book up here, and I can see that my first cut is my largest cut, and that's good. A lot of patterns aren't written that way. They uh, just willy-nilly put in the cutting. Always cut your biggest piece first. Your fabric is as big as it's going to be right now. If you start cutting willy-nilly, and then at the end, you've cut all this little bitty stuff, two and a half inches, two and a quarter inches, blah, 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 and you get to the end and you need a 10-inch square, well, you don't have a 10-inch square because you've cut it all up. You should start with the 10-inch square. If you only need one 10-inch square, then you'd have a whole bunch left over to cut your little bitty things out of. Do you see how that works? Okay, excellent. So my first cut I'm going to make here. I've got my ruler, and I'm going to put it, always check your dimensions first, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this line is straight, and this line is straight. As long as those two lines are straight, I know that I have a square piece. My piece is going to be perfectly straight. Now I just cut four layers of fabric. I didn't need two of those. I don't know what I was thinking. I need two of the next one. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to cut the next one. The next one, the next measurement, I'm going to go to it. I'm going to leave my fold fabric folded. I'm watching my lines. Now there, that's the two I needed. They're the same size. And I need one of these. So there's that one. There's that. Put that over there. Now, this one I cut wrong, no problem. I just cut the next. Okay, the next one I need two more of, so I'm going to cut this over here. Anything I need two strips of, I'm going to do it while my fabric is folded, okay? So let's look and see at the increments here. Lay it on the line. Make sure it's all lined up. Okay, voila, I've got two of those. If you want to with a pencil, this sometimes helps, is to just go ahead and check them off as you're making them. 
Made those, made those. Okay. Now I just need one of the next one. And it is, I'm not telling you the increments because you've got to buy the book. See how evil I am? The book comes with the kit here at Always in Stitches. I'm sure the book might be available by itself somewhere down the road. But as for us, we're saving all of our issues of the book for our kits. So that's that one. And then the next one is, let's see if we can get the next one out of this one that I miscut. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay. So then I had this little bitty strip left over. There you go. Out of that miscut. And then my next cut, I need three of my next cut. So see, my fabric is still folded. So all I have to do, instead of making three cuts, all I have to do now is just make two cuts. I'll make the first cut. So now I have two strips. Boy, it's too bad my leftover strip wasn't big enough, but it's not. But now, look, I'm going to open this up and look at how much fabric there is. Okay. And then I'm going to make my last cut. It's a magic trick. There's no bunnies inside the hat or inside the fabric fold. Now look at that. Fabric one is finished in, in that just little short amount of time. But there's something I'd like for you to do with this leftover piece right here. I wonder how big this piece is. Oh, this is the perfect piece. What I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to cut off that salvage edge. And then I'd like for you to cut a one and a half inch square. Now this is one and a fourth. I thought it was going to be one and a half. So I'm still going to save this. I might need it down the road. Okay. Where's my trash? Right here. Okay. So I'm going to save this. This is going to be with my scraps. But I'm going to open this up. Along the bottom here, I'm just going to cut off the salvage. And for the salvage, I usually try and just take off an inch. There's that. Now I want to cut a one and a half inch square. So I'm going to start by cutting a one and a half inch strip, turn it over, cut a one and a half inch square. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have this handy dandy card. Now, if you bought your kit from us, Always in Stitches, you get this little card in your kit. I'm going to take my glue stick. And I'm going to, this purple will dry clear. I like those purple because you know where the Then you know where you've put the paste, right. So there you go. Don't worry about that uh, glue. It will disappear. Now, this is where my magic marker comes in handy. Because now, I'm just going to write a number one right there on that. Now, I know when I start going through my instructions that that's fabric one. Isn't that ingenious? Yay for Dawn. Okay. Now, we are going to save every little bit in our scraps. So, scraps are going to go one place. Strips are going to go in the other. All right, Peter's going to pause, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We're back, and I've got all the ironing done except for this last piece, Fabric 10. And I wanted to save it for you because I wanted to share a few other things with you, okay? 
So if your fabric is really big and you're wrestling with it to get it all ironed, what you can do is find that middle crease, okay? Open it up and just press the middle crease before you straighten it. And I didn't show you how to use this best press. I'm finding that I really like this best press, especially because this has been folded up for a few days, and it's really got a lot of wrinkles in it. And what you want to do is you want to stand back from it a little ways, and you just want to spritz. You don't want to get on it like that. That is a disaster, okay? That's going to take a long time to dry. And really, all I want to do is just un, um, I want to relax. I want to relax that middle fold. So instead of when we first uh, did number one, we ironed the whole thing, one layer. This time, I'm just going to iron just that one fold. Then, see, it's still wrinkly. Then I'm going to bring it back, and then I'm going to put the salvages together and rock them back and forth, shifting the fabric back and forth until I have it nice and level. Then I'll put it back down. And now I'll go ahead and I will uh, press both sides together. And that's a little time saver. And it keeps you from having to wrestle that uh, fabric. So two ways of doing it. You can open it all up if you've got a big area, big ironing surface. You can do that. At home, my ironing board is completely covered with this wool mat, so I'm not restricted to this little confined area. But here at the shop, now we can always order you a full-size one, but we carry these, uh, this size here. And you know, anything I show you, we're going to be able to uh, get for you here at Always in Stitches if you happen to need it or want it or think you got to have it because I love gadgets and I love all kinds of sewing things. Okay, now see, I used that uh, best press and it went through and it pressed both sides at the same time. So that's really a good time saver, okay? All right, so I'm going to put my fabric over here. Here's all my fabric pressed, except for now it's all backwards because... 10 is on the top and 2 is on the bottom. So I'm just going to flip them. No big deal. This is 11 yards of fabric in the kit. So now I'm back to fabric 2. And it's all squared up. I'm going to fold it in half this way. Make sure it's all even with the fold. Get my, uh, <laughs> I always hide my rotary cutter underneath my fabric. So if your fabric's got a big lump in the middle of it, <laughs> that might be where your rotary cutter is hiding out. Okay, I'm going to take time to make that nice and straight. And what I love about doing it this way is it's so manageable on my cutting table. I just like to run my uh, ruler along the edge there just to kind of flatten everything out. That makes it really nice. Okay. Now you can see that I'm really uneven. See that? Look. One, two, three, four. So to straighten that edge, I'm going to have to come all the way over to there to begin with. Here we go. That's nice and level. I'm going to walk around my cutting table. Now, some people have really short arms. Luckily, I have pretty long arms for as short and round as I am. But if you get something heavy, I love this little antique iron, and it is nice and heavy. It probably weighs a good three, four pounds. 
I'm going to put it down there. My ruler's not going to slip because it's got these little gritty pads on the bottom. And that just gives it a little weight. And I'm going to just trust that it's not going to slip. See, sometimes your ruler will slip like that. You don't want that because then your line will be crooked. Heaven forbid you don't want crooked lines. Now look at this big scrap of fabric I have left over. Guess what? I'm going to be able to get my inch and a half out of that. I'm going to pick up one of my other little rulers here. Just real quick. Get this out of my way. Just real quick here. Now, see, this was just a scrap. This was from straightening the edge. I'm going to take and get my inch and a half out of this little, so I don't have to end, do it at the end. I'm going to do it at the beginning. Here's my paper. Here's my purple people eater. Again, that purple's going to dry. Look at that minty green color right there. Isn't that pretty? Get my marker. It's going to be upside down for you, but you get the idea. Now I'm going to write number two on there. Look at that. Now I know where number what fabric number two looks like. Because in the book, let me tell you, in the little brochure here, the pattern, it uh, the colorway that they do is the primrose. So if you're doing Primrose Cottage, you've got it made because your colors are already illustrated. But if you're doing any of the other colorways, then it, you're going to have to go by the number, okay? All right, let's put this back down in there. Let's put this away. So we got fabric number two. So I'm going to take my little line keeper. I'm going to move it over here to fabric number two. So that I can keep track of where I'm at. Now, my first cut, I need two strips of my first cut. Did I say this ruler was 8 and a half by 24 and a half? Yes. I don't know. I think I did say that. So my first cut, I'm going to move it to the right area. I'm going to make sure that this line is even with the top, this line is even with the side, and it looks really even down there. And I'm going to start here. If you feel like your ruler is going to move, either find something heavy to put on it or scoot your hand like a spider right down as you're cutting. Cut a little ways, stop, move your hand, cut a little ways, stop, move your hand, Cut a little ways and stop. You just don't want that ruler moving on you. So now I have two strips from the first cut that I needed. Voila. My second cut is just a one cut. So move this back. But see how my fabric is still controllable? A lot of people cut with their fabric hanging over the edge, and the pressure just, it just keeps pulling against you. So you don't want that. Okay, let's find our next measurement. Okay. And it always is helpful to, you know, look twice, measure twice, cut once, they say. Right. Okay, now I'm a little off. Well, look, if I put it straight along the top here, look what happens, okay? Now, that just happens sometimes. So we're, the, so we're on right here. So we're here. That's where we want to be. We're here. But as, you go up, but as you go down, see that? It, it, opened. it did. Because did you see me open the fabric? Yeah. Yep. It shifted the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it, all right, even though it's off. Now, if it were off, it has to be too big off. Do you understand what I mean? In other words, 
this couldn't be short of the measurement. It's longer than the measurement I want. I want it to be on that line, but it's bigger. If it were smaller, I'd have to keep moving my ruler over, right? Okay, so this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut. Then I'm going to fold on my cut line that I know is square. That's my square line right there. You can see I'm off right there. I'm going to lay this back down on the measurement that I want. And now I'm going to cut off a little sliver. And now my fabric is back to being square. Yay? Yay. Lay that on here. Fabric number two. My next cut is a single cut. So again, I'm just going to move that. Now this edge should be straight. Because I didn't, I didn't adjust the fabric in any way. And voila, it is straight as cornrows. Cornrows. We're here in Indiana. We have cornrows, and we... Straight as Cupid's arrow. Okay, so that's my next cut. Okay, now I only need one strip of the next one, and it's a weirdo measurement. It's a 3-8. I'm going to move my fabric. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Sure okay, well, this is what I do in my mind. Four eighths is a half, yes? Yeah. So if I only want three eighths, that means I just want to back off an eighth of a half. So let's say I'm cutting four and three eighths, okay? I'll lay my ruler down at four and a half. Four and three eighths. So look over here. So I've got my ruler at four and a half. This is my four and a half line right there. Okay? Now I'm just going to back off an eighth. And now I know I have four and three eighths instead of counting, you know? Uh, if you don't know three-eighths. I mean, if you're not used to it. It's kind of a cheating way to do it. Okay, so there's that. Now my next measurement, I'm going to have two of the same one. So I'm going to move my fabric back together. I'm going to line it up. fabric. Of course, when you're on camera, it doesn't want to do it as good as it does at home. Okay, there we go. See that? Now I've got it back together. And I'm going to cut two strips the same. probably could have cut the two faster if I just left it open for a while. Okay, here we go. But I'm going to cut these both at the same time. Okay. Next cut, I've got to have two of the same. So... See, it paid to go ahead and straighten that because now it's already ready to go. Put my ruler down. If I feel like I need to, I can put my little weight down. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> I just love all my little antique -y things that I use. Okay, now my next measurement is two of the same.
Now, I don't know if you know this about me or not, Peter, but I cut with my tongue. I've always got it moving, sticking out, whatever. If you do that, you need to write it in the comments because it's just something I do. So with my tongue, all that kind of stuff. And my next measurement. Yes, they do. And then the next measurement is two of the same. Two strips, same measurement. Cut them both at once. If you're not comfortable doing that, by all means, don't double your fabric. Leave your fabric uh, one layer. Or not one layer, but two layers like it comes off the bolt. So now I have this as my scrap. Now that doesn't give me very much. If I had made a mistake in my cutting, mm, that might have been an oops. You'd have to come back in the store and get you some uh, extra. So that's fabric number two. I've already put it on my cheat sheet. I've got my label. I'm going to lay it here on fabric number one. And yummy, yummy, yummy. There we go. Now I've got fabric number three. Take off my label. It's easier probably if you do go ahead and press all your fabric at once. Then it's all ready to go. If you have an old uh, clothes dryer, one of those that is like an accordion and it flips up like that and it has little rods, uh, that'd be fun to put your uh, fabric on. Oh, my goodness, this one was way off. Look at that again. Another. Yeah. Again, I'm going to have to go clear in here, clear in there to get, to get it straight. Something's happened to my microphone. No, there. I just must have knocked it. I hope I didn't hurt somebody's eardrums. Okay, I'm going to walk around. I love this being able to walk around my uh, cutting table here. Can't do that at home. Look again. I have a little piece that I think I can get an inch and a half out of. Yes, I can. One and one half is right there. That becomes scrappity scraps. Blue fabric number three. Oh, look how pretty that is next to that. Pretty. Change of marker. No, it's cookie tin. Number three. Should have glued that down better. I bet you will, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, now I'm going to move my page. Look on my book, it's green. It's this wild and crazy green, but it, it's number three in that quilt. I'm going to get my cross stitch line back out. It really helps me keep my place. See that? And then this little uh, stand really helps me read it good. So my first cut is a single cut. So here we are, same old thing. And I prefer to cut the strips first. Instead of going through and cutting the strips and then subcutting them, 
I like to cut the strips first. Like all the strips? Like, like all the strips, yeah. That's what we're doing. Okay, for some reason, I'm off again. Is there a bounce that hit you? I don't know. There's something going on. Chew it straight on your two edges. There we go. All right, there's that. Now the next one, there's three cuts that are all the same. Three strips. Okay, take your time. Here we go. One. I'm not going to fold it back together. I'm just going to cut them. Now look, I raised up my fabric, and I want you to look at what happened. See how it split right there and it's not even? I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to smooth that out and it'll come right back together. Okay? Little tip. Here we go for another one. So this will be the third of the same size. Now, if I were at home, I would have put it back together. I would have taken the time and done it. Now, the next one is just a single strip. So I'm going to lay that down. Now, look, I don't know how long we've been here. Probably a half an hour or so. Right, Peter? About a half an hour. So we've already cut fabrics one, two, and three in a half an hour. So this is going pretty fast. Forty-five minutes. Look at this. Okay. Lost my place there for a minute. Okay, that's why it's good to check them off, check them off, check them off. Okay. The next strip. The next strip. Ooh, now I felt that move just a tiny bit. And then the next two strips, I mean the next three strips, are all the same. Every time you move your fabric, you risk, you risk it not being square. So try your best not to uh, move your fabric as much as possible. Okay. And one more strip and we'll be done with fabric number three.
Look at that. Look at how fast that went. So now fabric number three, ready to go on the pile. This is the extra. So you get the idea, right? And that's how I'm just going to keep going until I get all 10 fabrics done. So I've got them here on my chair. I'm going to cut them and cut them and cut them. You don't need to stand and see me cut strip after strip after strip. They're just, it's the same thing. So this was episode one, part one. And we're going to have episode one, part two, a little later on. And if you want to get some kind of notification when we come back on, if you will hit subscribe and uh, subscribe to the Always in Stitches Noblesville uh, YouTube channel, then you will always get notifications on when we put up stuff. And we're always putting stuff up. It's all kinds of things, sewing machine demonstrations, uh, just all kinds of things on YouTube. We have this wonderful channel, this wonderful medium. Um, social media is really, really exciting right now because of all the staying apart from each other and staying at home and all that stuff. So um, we're relying on social media a lot more. And we can't have classes here because we can't all be six foot apart, all wearing masks, all trying to teach. So this is how we're going to do it for a while. So please join me again for episode part, episode one, part two, coming just as soon as we can get it filmed. Thanks. Have a nice day. Bye.